you want to make animations but have no idea where to get started, you've come to the right place. We'll be making this animation together in less than 20 minutes. I highly recommend a drawing tablet for animations, but a mouse will do just fine for this video. By the end of the video, you'll have a solid understanding on what it takes to create animations and can start making your own to share with others. Before we get started, we have to download three things. Krita, which is a free digital art and animation program, FFmpeg, an executable that allows us to save our animations as an mp4 or gif in Krita, and lastly, a sound file I named Ball Bounce, which we'll be using in our animation for this video. Links can be found below in the description. Once you've got everything downloaded, let's get started and open up Krita. If my page layout looks different from what you're seeing, just come up here to Window, Workspace, and Default. We can move these windows around to our liking, but don't worry about that too much for this video. I'm only going to show the basics. Click on New File, Custom Document, and for image size we will set both the height and width to 1080, giving us a nice 1 to 1 aspect ratio. For the measurements, we'll go with pixels. The resolution's okay at 300 pixels per inch. After that, we'll come down here and click Create. Let's quickly go over some navigation basics. To pan our canvas, hold down the spacebar while clicking and dragging. To zoom, we hold down the control key and while doing this, we press the plus key to zoom in or the minus key to zoom out. By the way, if you're using a mouse, you can also zoom in and out with the middle mouse button. Pretty cool, huh? To reset our zoom to the default view, we can press 1 on the keyboard. Take as much time as you need to get used to these because they will be used a lot. To start animating, we need access to a couple more toolbars on the screen. We're going to come up here to Settings, Dockers, Animation Timeline, and then for the other, Settings, Dockers, Onion Skins. I'll explain what these are used for later, so don't worry. Come over here to the right, and on the Layers Docker, double click on Paint Layer 1 to change its name to Stickman. Alright, let's finally start animating, shall we? Oh, almost forgot. Make sure you have the color black selected. On the left in the Toolbox Docker, we're going to click on the Ellipse Tool. We can use this to make the head of our Stickman. If we click and drag, we'll get a display for our circle size. To get a perfect circle, we can hold the shift key. If you notice, my circle's a bit too thick, so to adjust the size, I can press the left bracket on the keyboard to make it smaller, and the right bracket to make it larger. We'll just use a size 10, which can also be adjusted here. So, I'm going to press Ctrl plus Z to undo and draw the new circle. But of course, our stick man needs a body. We'll use the line tool in the toolbox docker. Just click and drag to draw the lines. If you need help drawing horizontal or vertical lines, you can hold down the shift key. The right arm should be fairly long and pretty far out from our right leg. That should do it. Remember, if you mess up, use Ctrl plus Z to undo. As for the ball, we're going to give it its own layer. This will make it easier to animate later. Come back over to the Layers Docker and click the plus sign. Double click and let's name it Ball. Let's use the Ellipse tool again while holding Shift to make sure that our ball is a perfect circle. There we go. Don't make it too large, I'd say slightly smaller than the head of our stick man. Using the Transform tool with Ctrl plus T, Click on the ball to drag it to his hand. We can get a little preview of our animation if you hold shift. The ball shouldn't overlap the leg. Then press enter when we're done with that. We've done a lot of work so far, so let's save our file. We can name it whatever we want, just make sure to save it as a Krita document. Save as often as possible so we don't lose our work. 
All right, so we have our stick man and our ball, but they ain't exactly animated yet. It's time we use the animation features I mentioned earlier. On the animation timeline at the bottom, click this icon here with the three horizontal bars. We'll leave the clip start at zero and set the clip end to 40. The frame rate will be left at 24. This is because it'll sync up with the sound file we downloaded earlier. So with our ball layer selected, click the frame register here. This shows what current frame we're on and we want to go to frame eight. Now we come down here and right click the section with the orange circle in the center and create blank frame. Whoa, our ball vanished. That's okay, we're gonna get it back. Over here on the first frame, we're gonna right click and copy keyframes. Then come back over here to frame eight, right click and paste keyframes. Our ball is back. Now let's use the transform tool with control plus T to move this ball downward. Remember, you can hold the shift key to keep our movement perfectly straight. When we're happy with where it is, hit the play button on the animation timeline. It moves. Look at you, animator. Kudos for getting this far. Anyway, the ball goes down but takes a while to come back up. Let's fix that. We can stop our animation by pressing this square icon next to the play button. Come back over here to frame zero, copy keyframe, and then paste it on frame 14. We're gonna copy and paste keyframes a few more times, so I'll show you a trick I use to help organize my animations better. On frame eight, right click, and at the bottom you'll see a bunch of colors. I'm gonna make mine red since it contrasts the blue. So now we will see on our timeline, the blue frames show when the ball is in our stick man's hand and the red frames show when the ball hits the ground. Let's copy and paste the red frame on frame 21 and the blue frame on frame 27. Once we do that, hit play. We've got a nice dribble animation, but we have to make the stick man's arm move along with the ball too. In our layers panel, let's lock the ball layer for now. Locking a layer keeps us from accidentally making changes to it. We'll use it again later, but let's switch to the stick man layer. Come over to frame eight like we did with the ball, right click, create blank frame. Then we're gonna copy the frame on frame zero and paste it back on frame eight. Oh, let's make it red too. To move the arm, we'll need to use the rectangular selection tool in the toolbox. We'll zoom in to make this a bit easier. Click and drag so that our arm is inside the selection box. Now, using the transform tool, we can rotate the arm downward. Once we have a solid angle, we'll move the arm back to the socket by clicking and dragging the box. We'll press Control plus D when we're done. Back on the animation timeline, let's copy and paste our blue keyframes on frames 14 and 27. Then we'll copy the red keyframe to frame 21. We can look at our ball's keyframes for reference since they use the same colors. When we're done, hit the play button. Pretty cool, huh? Well, it's going to get a whole lot cooler real fast because now we'll add our sound. Below the animation timeline, there's a little speaker icon. Click it, open audio, and then find where we saved the ball bounce file in the beginning. Open. Now, when we play the animation, there's going to be a sound effect. If the volume's not to our liking, we can adjust it here. For any future animations you make, I recommend using WAV files. Other file types, mainly MP3s, can be a little glitchy in Krita sometimes. So our animation is working and we have sound, but let's go that extra mile. Time to use onion skins. First, we'll lock our stick man layer and then switch to the ball layer, also unlocking it. On the timeline, this grayed out icon that kind of looks like a light bulb, this is the onion skin button. 
turn it on, and then as we go through our timeline, we can see a slightly transparent display of the ball. This display shows us what the ball looks like on the keyframes before and after it. Got that? No. All right, this will make it easier. Let's copy the keyframe on frame 14 and paste it on frame 11. Let's make it a different color too. How about green? We'll use green keyframes for our in-between animations of the ball moving up and down. Once again, using the transform tool, we'll move our ball to be about center of our onion skins. Don't worry about it being perfect, just trust yourself. So now we can see that our onion skin shows a display of the next frame in green and the previous frame in red. We can change the opacity strength of the onion skins over here while also changing the colors down here. We'll copy our new green keyframe and paste it on frames 5, 18, and 24. Let's lock the ball layer and go back to the stick man layer to give him in-betweens as well. Just like we did with the ball layer, we'll turn on the onion skin and copy a blue frame over to frame 11. Make it green by the way. Using the selection tool, We'll grab the arm and rotate it with the transform tool. Let's move the pivot over to the arm socket and then rotate it to be about center of the onion skins. When we're done, we'll copy these frames and paste them to match the keyframes of our ball animation. Now, zoom out, turn off the onion skins, and let's hit play. Not bad, not bad, but if you ask me, the ball doesn't look too bouncy, almost like he's dribbling a bowling ball. We can fix that. Lock the stick man layer because we're probably not going to touch it again for the rest of this video. Switch to and unlock the ball layer and let's create a blank frame on frame 9. Let's make this frame yellow. We'll need the onion skins again as well, so we'll turn that back on too. Using the ellipse tool, let's make the ball flatten a bit. It will need to be wider than our onion skin, but not as tall. Center it as best you can, but remember, if you need help, we can use the transform tool. Then, we'll create another blank frame on frame 10. Using the ellipse tool again, we'll make our ball taller, but a lot more narrow. Then, we'll copy both of our yellow keyframes we just created. Hold control as you click each frame to select multiple frames at the same time. Come over to frame 22, right click and paste. After that, turn the onion skin off and hit the play button. Our ball flattens as it impacts the ground and then narrows going upward to show that it's moving at a much faster speed. This is called squash and stretch. Our animation's really great, but we could add some colors and personality. Lock the ball layer and then I'll show you some spice. Hit the plus sign over here to make a new layer. We'll name this one ball color. Click and drag to move it below the ball and stick man layer. Over here in the toolbox, we're gonna use the fill tool. So let's say we wanna make an orange ball. If you prefer something else like blue balls, that's okay too. Up here on the advanced color selector, we can get our new color. Now, over on the Tool Options tab, we'll change the Grow Selection to 1. This will help avoid any missed areas for our Fill Tool. After going to frame 0, just click inside the ball and it will become our color. Hit Play. I mean, it's colored. However, it's only showing up in one frame. Since the ball is moving, we'll have to make a new keyframe corresponding with each keyframe of our ball layer. We can hide the stickman layer on the timeline by clicking the thumbtack. So yeah, animation can be a little tedious sometimes. But that's why we love it. There. Now, we just fill in the ball on each of our new frames we created. You can make this a little faster by going in between each frame with the arrow keys. After the last frame, let's reset the animation timeline and hit play. 
And now the ball is fully colored throughout our entire animation. Nice. If we want to color the head of our stick man, we can follow the same process. Make a new layer. We'll name this one head color. On the advanced color selector, choose any color you want. I'll go with this one. Fill it in. Hey, it looks just like me. Now I know what you're thinking. Do I have to copy and paste keyframes all over again? And the answer is no. We don't have to make any new keyframes for this layer since the head does not move. We can also do this for our background too. Select the background layer at the bottom and unlock it so that we can make changes to it. To change the color of our background, we need to enable fast mode in the tool option. Fast mode will completely fill a layer, ignoring all the other layers in use. That looks awful. I'm gonna try blue instead. So I wanna put my stick man on the sidewalk. Blue sky, green grass, the usual. To do some freehand drawing, we can select the brush tool in the toolbox. Over to the right in the brush presets, there are all types of different brushes we can use. I'll be using the basic one brush. We can also change the size of our brush by using the brackets. You don't have to do exactly what I'm doing. Experiment and have some fun. There's always the undo button if you make a mistake. So, to give our stick man a face, we can make a new layer. Make sure this layer is at the very top so it isn't covered up by the others. The topmost layers are always shown first in Krita. Now don't laugh, I'm using a mouse for this video. We can give our stick man eyes, a mouth, hair, you name it. Heck, uh, we can even make a stick woman. All right, when we're happy with our animation, we can move to the final step. We need to render the animation. At the top, we're gonna click File, Render Animation. For now, just click Video. We can leave these settings alone. Now, if you look here, it says FFmpeg. This was one of the files we downloaded at the beginning. We have to find where we saved it and click Open. Let's render our video to be an MPEG-4. This way, our animation will have sound. Just take note of the video location. That's where it will save when it's finished. Then click OK. Now we just gotta wait a moment. It's usually done by the time these pop-ups go away. And we did it. We have our animation and we can freely upload it and share with others however we see fit. Good job, you animator, you. Thanks so much for watching my video. If you learned a thing or two, or maybe even laughed, like the video and subscribe to my channel. Feel free to leave a comment with questions, feedback, or possibly other tutorials you'd want to see in the near future. I wish you all the best with your future animation endeavors. Keep at it. Anyway, take care. Catch you later.